Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in medicine for study and rapid review. This video is on the functional anatomy of the kidney. There are two kidneys. Each kidney has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The medulla is further divided into these little triangles called renal pyramids. So the base of the pyramid is at the border, and the apex or the papilla of the pyramid has renal calyces. The minor calyx first, and they fuse to form major calyces, which together form the renal pelvis, and that continues down as the ureter. The kidney gets a lot of blood. Around 25% of the cardiac output goes to the kidney, through the renal arteries, which enters through the hilum. They divide into segmental arteries, then the interlobar artery, followed by the arcuate artery, the interlobular artery, and the afferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole enters the first part of the nephron, the glomerulus. So the kidney has millions of nephrons, and these nephrons are the core functional unit. They have a tuft of capillaries called a glomerulus and a renal tubule. The glomerulus is encased in a dilated portion of the tubule called the Bowman's capsule. Blood from the glomerulus exits via the efferent arteriole, and that goes to form the peritubular capillaries, which finally drains into the venous outflow tracts. Even though the kidney gets a lot of blood, the medulla gets lesser flow than the cortex, making it more vulnerable to ischemia. The blood entering the glomerulus gets filtered. That produces glomerular filtrate, which then goes through the rest of the nephron. So let's magnify the filter a little. The glomerulus is a set of capillaries, so it has an endothelial layer and a basement membrane. The endothelial cells are fenestrated, so they have spaces. The Bowman's capsule has an outer parietal and an inner visceral layer. The visceral layer has specialized cells called podocytes, and the podocytes have foot processes. The interdigitation of the foot processes creates spaces again, so obviously it's a size barrier because molecules larger than these spaces can't pass through. But also, it's a charge barrier. There are substances like proteoglycans in the basement membrane which give it a negative charge. All three layers are negatively charged, so they repulse substances with negative charges, like albumin, even though it's small enough to fit through. So this filtration membrane, or the glomerular filtration barrier, does not let plasma proteins through. If there's any damage here, like if there's loss of this negative charge, which would happen in something like minimal change disease, proteins will appear in the urine, and that's called proteinuria. The renal tubule consists of the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, which has three parts, the thin descending segment, a thin ascending segment, and a thick ascending limb, followed by the distal convoluted tubule, and then the cortical collecting tubule, which leads into the cortical collecting duct. Collecting ducts from multiple nephrons fuse together, so it gets larger until it forms the medullary collecting duct, which eventually empties at the renal papillae into the renal pelvis. Most of the nephrons have their glomerulus in the outer part of the cortex, so the loop of Henle will reach only up to the outer medulla. These are cortical nephrons. Around 25% of the nephrons have their glomerulus lower down in the cortex, so the loop of Henle reaches into the deeper medulla. These are juxtamedullary nephrons. They have specialized peritubular capillaries which follow the loop of Henle and they're called the vasorecta. The significance here is that the cortical nephrons form urine, but the juxtamedullary nephrons are needed for concentrating the urine. At the distal end of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, the early distal tubular cells are modified to form specialized cells called the macula densa. Those cells, together with modified cells of the afferent arteriole, called the juxtaglomerular cells, and the extraglomerular mesangial cells, all three, they form the juxtaglomerular apparatus, the JGA, and that's important for the regulation of the glomerular filtration rate. So with all these structures, the nephron performs functions of filtration at the glomerulus, 
reabsorption, secretion at the tubule, and finally excretion. So it maintains the kidney's functions of water and electrolyte balance, acid-base balance, excretion of metabolic waste, in addition to the other functions that the kidney has, like regulation of blood pressure, RBC production, and its hormonal functions. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.